for anyone who hasn't even looked at UCNC, <clears throat> this is like a quick tour of the uh, screens. As you can see, it's nicely laid out. <clears throat> Normal things, the DROs. You can zero all, or you can zero one at a time on here. So if you get to your point and you want to zero X, you press this button. If you want to zero Y, you press that one. If you want to zero them all to zero, press there. Okay, so you, if you want to switch to machine coordinates, you've got that. You've got home all, which sends all the accesses to the home position. You've got your feed rate, your spindle speed. When it's running, you've got your actual feed rate and your actual spindle speed comes up. As you can see, mine's on the screen and I've got it at 93%. But I've got it analog so I can actually turn it down. Anything from zero up to 150%. And that's just analog on the pot which is the difference between the 300 and the 400. Um, one has got analog, one hasn't. <clears throat> you can also do the same for spindle speed. I haven't got that set up. You've got your G54, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which are your offset positions. As you can see, the uh, offsets change here. When I click through, these are different work offsets I've used. Okay. So, <clears throat> you've got a probing button, so that'll send your probe down and either zero or tool probe, whichever you set it up to. <clears throat> a go to zero button, which sends all the access home. You've got three park positions, which are nice, park one, two, and three. And you can just set those positions in a macro to exactly where you want it on the screen. So you've got one, two, and three here, and that just sends the machine to those particular positions. Um, you've got load file, edit file, rewind file. Edit file is a normal notepad editor <clears throat> and close file. So as you can see, I've got a file loaded. Okay, I'm going to close that file. File's out now. <clears throat> you've got your MIDI on the main screen, so MDI, which is your machine direct input, where you can type in, um, just say for instance, you want it to go to X200, um, type in G0X200 enter and off the machine will go to there <clears throat> so on the main screen here you've got the normal things you've got cycle start single line feed hold cycle stop you've also got an offline mode which will switch the machine off and puts it into simulation not used very often um <clears throat> i'll reload a final second let's just put in just open a file <clears throat> just so i can show you the toolpath Okay, toolpath screen. There's my toolpath, which is something that's going to be cut. And you can put it into ISO view, front view, side view, top view. Okay, you've also got all of the load file, close file, edit file. Um, they're all on here as well. And the normal um, start, single line feed hold, etc. All in handy position so you can find them. If you look at, you uh, have the offset screen. It's nice and easy to use, it's touch the current offsets, the exact machine coordinates. Mine's actually parked at minus 50, 50 from the switches and minus 5. Okay, you've got your work offsets, which is whatever it's set up to. If you look at those changing, as I go through G54, 55, 56. So you can actually set it on this screen. You can offset to the current position. So if your machine is exactly over your work, you just press offset current position. That's where you are. Okay, you get your tool tables, which is nice and easy. This is just a tab on the top, top of the screen. So you've got run, tool path, offsets, tools. And in uh, UCNC, you have up to 96 tools. So you've got one and two on the top, it takes you through. Now mine are auto set off the probe. So the numbers you see in there are all of the probed um, heights of the tools. Then you go into configuration. Now, when you open the configuration screen, you've got access setup, which is the same sort of thing as Mac 3, but it's all very easy to get to. This is the X axis. <clears throat> and then if you just look through here, it's all very familiar. Step pin, direction pin, enable pin, limit pin, home pin, blah, blah, blah. Just read down the screen, fill in your details. Um, <clears throat> and so you've got X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. And then you've got your spindle. Now your spindle can be PWM, 
you set up here, step and direction. Um, <clears throat> you can have it running off an encoder, so if you're doing threading, etc., or um, rigid tapping, that's here. Um, you can just set all of the figures up minimal speed, maximum speed, yeah, output relays, how much you want it to delay. If you want flood and mist coming on, you can use that here with all the delays, etc. So that's really easy. <clears throat> You've got your inputs and outputs screen, which is the next one across. Okay, again, very easy to set up, it's all there. So you just put your ports and pin numbers in and carry on through. You've got IO triggers, which are, if you want an input to trigger an output, you can put those in here. These ones here, these three, are set up for my buttons, <clears throat> which are basically start, stop, and feed hold. I don't know if you saw that, start, stop and feed hold. They're just the ones on my control panel and they were set up there, just the port pin numbers. <clears throat> You've got your general setting screen, which is um, things like your trajectory plan. Stop at angles over 85 degrees, you want really square corners. <clears throat> Look ahead lines, a 300 is fine, that keeps it nice and fast. Linear area max, linear? error maximum it's bloody hard to say um, I've set mine to 0.2 millimeters no point on wood to go any more accurate than that um, so that's absolutely fine <coughs> kernel frequency is whatever you set to I've got mine running 100 kilohertz which is actually as fast as Mac 3 will ever go but this um, <coughs> if you use this is on the USB um, port at the moment so it's under 100 kilohertz. I believe the um, Ethernet one is 400 kilohertz. Not that that makes a huge difference apart from speed if your steppers or servos will take it. Um, just simple things like the same sort of th thing as Mac 3. Ignore tool change, stop spin or wait for slack to start or run the tool change macro. Mine's automatic so I run the tool change macro. Um, <clears throat> that's that screen. You've got your appearance screen where you can change the colors, etc. Diagnostic screen, which shows you these are all of the ports and pins. I've got five port, one, two, three, four, five. Five ports of inputs and outputs. Green is on, obviously. Oh, sorry. Green is an input, which is on. Red is an output, which is on. Number one is flashing because I've got a char charge pump running in the machine. So if the, for any reason the computer crashes, the machine will stop instantly. Um, <clears throat> it's all the same sort of thing that you'll find in Mac 3. All your position numbers, and it tells you if it's on or off. On this one, you also got analog, which you can see as I turn it up or down, the analog number changes from zero right the way up to 65536. Oh, 535, okay. Close. This has also got a CAM input, <clears throat> so you can actually import a DXF file and use it. Um, to create your code so that's already in the program um, so if you want to just bring in a normal txf file generate toolpath and create g-code you can do that which is just a free feature which is really nice um, you've also got on the left hand side you have <coughs> something that's not coming up at the moment <coughs> because it's in reset you've got the tab screen it flies out <clears throat> so that's just a basic overview that's the screen set the standard one that was on there um, I think it's pretty good it's not cluttered and it keeps the machine nice and easy to use 